It's an important hearing. It's a hearing that we have been working on and, and working closely with Co-Chair Merkley uh, and, of course, Ranking Member McGovern, because uh, this is an issue that is getting worse, not better. And so uh, we are trying to bring a focus on it. We've introduced legislation. It's totally bipartisan. Uh, Senator Merkley, Jim McGovern, and I and others have, have uh, sponsored it, which is pending now in both the House and the Senate. The Chinese Communist Party uses modern technology to digitally harass and surveil individuals around the globe. They abuse the Interpol system to punish and return those who exercise their freedom of speech while abroad. They detain and harass dissidents, families and friends back in China, to unjustly attempt to coerce silence, like the sister of Rushan Abbas, who will join us here this morning in panel number two. Uh, Ms. Rushan Ab Abbas. Thank you, Chairman Smith, Chairman Merkley, members of the committee, and the, all the staff at the commission. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak today. The committee is well aware of the CCP's endless list of genocidal crimes being carried out against the Uyghurs and the other Turkic groups in East Turkestan, also known as Xinjiang. Today, I will speak about the Chinese regime's use of transnational repression to stifle defiance and hide their crimes, Beijing's tactics of intimidation and the hostage taking to silence Uyghurs have global effect. Through these measures, the CCP violates the First Amendment rights of American citizens residing within the U.S. soil. The totalitarian rule from China extends beyond its borders, oppressing the U.S. citizens. In 2018, we received the news that 24 of my husband, Abdul Hakim Idris's family members were missing and likely detained in the camps. On September 5th, 2018, I spoke about the growing number of the mass detention and they exposed the CCP's genocidal policies at the Hudson Institute here in Washington. Six days later, my sister, Gulshan Abbas, was unjustly detained by the regime in retaliation for my activism and my free speech as a U.S. citizen. Yesterday marks the fifth anniversary of her being taken from our lives. The Chinese regime has maintained silence about her situation while their mouthpiece Global Times Network spread misinformation and accusing me of fabricating my claims about her disappearances. Later, the Chinese MOFA confirmed her false imprisonment, all based on fabricated charges. My sister Gulshan has no political history and is a retired medical doctor, a mother, and a grandma who continues to suffer in China's prison. For five long years, my niece Ziba has put her life on hold, relentlessly fighting for her mother's freedom. Witnessing her journey is incredibly painful as she navigates working, raising her five-year-old daughter, while grappling with the overwhelming loss and the trauma of having her mother held hostage because of me. Recently, we just learned that my father-in-law, Abdul Karim Zikrullah Idris, passed away in January of this year. My husband lost contact with his family in April 2017. After over six years, all we know is that his father passed away seven months ago. The exact date and the circumstances surrounding his death are unknown. My mother-in-law, Habib Khan Idris, is said to be outside the camps, but she's in poor health, alone, and has no one to take care of her because of her four children, and all her grandchildren are still missing and likely detained. The plight of my sister and my in-laws are one of many. Uyghurs in the United States are facing the most significant crisis of our lives. But many of us are afraid to speak out because of what might happen to our lives back home in our homeland. Our efforts to raise awareness and advocate for change are targeted and undermined. 
Remember when we used to have this sort of hearings at the hill before a room full of Uyghurs used to join you with holding their pictures of their family members missing? But today, you don't see many. They are afraid of coming to the public events like this as a direct result of TNR. I face daily online attacks with hate and misinformation spread through the CCP bottom accounts. Uyghur activists, including myself, are subject to libel and harassment, fostering mistrust and hatred. Platforms like Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube offer no protection. Today, I urge you to protect Uyghur American citizens. This call is reinforced through my written testimony and the policy recommendations. I returned from Almaty, Kazakhstan last night. We were there for a film festival featuring the documentary In Search of My Sister, which highlights my story and my sister's detention. When we arrived there, the venue canceled the event. The supposed reasons for the cancellation vary. Some cites a visit of two Chinese diplomats to the venue the day before. Others point to the Kazakh government. Nonetheless, it's clear that the CCP is ultimately responsible for suppressing this event. The CCP is an evident threat to freedom and democracy in the world. China's international policing, intimidation, and harassment tactics extend to everyone, as highlighted by Honorable Mr. Chong and the experts here. I am, as a female activist, personally experiencing everything that Yana described earlier. China's economic and technological power gives the government significant, away, um, significant sway, causing self-censorship and silence in various American industries. The CCP influence undermines American values and global freedom. And as long as our families are detained in prison, concentration camps, forced into slavery with forced labor, forced into marriages, facing forced sterilization, and the forced abortion, and the kidnapping, all Uyghurs worldwide are direct victims of this genocide. Urgent action is necessary to protect not just my sister, my in-laws, and the millions of the Uyghurs, but the entire world. Only through collective efforts can we safeguard Americans from China's infiltration and the normalization of TNR here at home. I ask that we work together to preserve democracy and the freedom and human rights. If we do not stand to hold the CCP accountable today, we will most certainly lose the privilege tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very, very much for your testimony, for your, your incredible courage for speaking out, and for the agony you have suffered personally for your sister. Uh, I remember when Tom Swazi did the showing of um, your um, documentary, which again, you showed again, I believe it's the same one yesterday. Uh, you know, it's very moving, and I think we ought to do it again here on Capitol Hill, you know, with the speaker and others, so they can see just how, how uh, barbaric and cruel the Chinese Communist Party really is in taking hostages of family members and friends uh, for people who speak out, as you have done so bravely. So um, I would offer that to you. I thank you for traveling 25 hours on a plane to get here. Uh, to testify. I mean, that, again, is a personal sacrifice uh, on, your, on behalf of your sister and all Uyghurs. Uh, and again, if we don't, as a country, and if the West and the democracies do not begin calling out aggressively the abuses of Xi Jinping, uh, the abuses will only multiply. And uh, so the idea behind this hearing, behind our legislation on transnational um, uh, crimes that are being committed by so-called police and others uh, on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party here and elsewhere, uh, it's time to put a tourniquet on it all. Uh, it just has to happen uh, because it's only going to get worse. Uh, so I thank you. I'd like to ask um, Rishan if you could, um, in what way should the U.S. government um, be more helpful to the diaspora like yourself who are suffering so much? Uh, is there a, a, an outreach? Is there, I mean, does the FBI talk to you at all and to others? Um, you know, do we have enough resources deployed 
Uh, you know, obviously there's always a concern. Do you have enough people at the FBI and other uh, agencies to do the work? Um, is the need not being staffed sufficiently, or is there a lack of, of um, you know, actual guidance coming from, from, the, from the administration? Um, yes, we have been talking to the FBI and the State Department and the other law enforcement, mm -hmm. and it uh, seems like they are on it, paying attention, but it um, seems like there's not much they can do to people like ourselves, um, since all this libel, harassment, intimidations, and the blackmails um, online uh, especially. They are protected under the, the freedom of speech. Um, it's interesting how um, these platforms are not open to the general public in China. The regular, ordinary Chinese people cannot use YouTube or Twitter or Facebook and the other social media platforms. Yet, the uh, Chinese uh, officials or uh, Chinese state media or those uh, Chinese troll accounts constantly attacking us, harassing us, um, but when we uh, reach out to FBI and the others, um, they are in touch with us and they constantly communicating with us, but we don't see any tangible help. We are already facing so much agony. Our family members are suffering. Every day, everything we do is at the cost of our family members' freedom. And especially, I wake up every day with my sister's face and I go to bed with her face. And since uh, her detention, my life completely changed. I quit my full-time job as a business development director, and every, um, you know, the dream or uh, the um, ambition I had professionally for my life all evaporated in overnight. I became a full-time activist. I doubled down my efforts. Therefore, when I see those kind of attacks, which is daily, I, I take these as the impact of my work. We are speaking to the power, and we have the truth, and the Chinese communist regime is afraid of the truth. But at the same time, it frustrates me when I see absolutely nothing is being provided other than just the, you know, interviews or talks or saying that they are doing something but seems like it's extremely slow. We have been talking to FBI for over a year now. I don't see any kind of tangible action being provided. Yana, anything else you would like to add before we uh, conclude the hearing? And Rashawn, know that uh, your sister will remain a high priority for this commission and you uh, and others who are in that similar situation. I do thank you, especially we all do, for your courage in coming forward. Um, you know, injustice need not be forever. And, uh, you know, the heroes of democracy and human rights are you and your sister and, and others who are fighting so tenaciously uh, and paying for it with the loss of their freedom. So thank you for that sacrifice. I can't tell you how in awe I am and my colleagues are uh, of what you have suffered uh, and what you persevere to continue to bring the message to the world uh, about what is happening uh, by Xi Jinping. So thank you. Uh, thank you so much. The hearing is adjourned.